about uh, something really interesting, uh, a little bit complex, but I want to talk about how a induction motor actually generates torque, right? Just using that magnetic field between the stator and the rotor. Uh, it's kind of an interesting topic. We're going to use a lot of our left hand rules, but I want to think about a motor and the way it's constructed for a second. So I'm okay. We're going to do like a kind of a cross section here. So I have my, you know, my motor, right? It's got a base, sure. And I'm going to have, this would be my stator, right? And it's going to be, you know, in one place. It is going to generate a rotating magnetic field, right? Which we'll probably talk about in a different video, but inside this stator, we have a rotating magnetic field, right? So there is going to be a magnetic north pole, which for right now, we're going to say at this very, very moment in time, we'll say this is the north pole, which means that over here on the other side of this cross section, this would be the south pole over here, right? Now inside this stator, we have that rotor, right? The rotor is pretty close to the stator, right? And in the center of that rotor is that shaft, right? So this is all the rotor, right? So right inside the stator is the rotor. And thinking about how a rotor is built, rotor is a whole bunch of rotor bars or rotor conductors all throughout that rotor. So I'm going to draw those conductors in. So one, here's one, here's one. All right, so we'll pretend that those are the rotor bars or the rotor conductors. Right, so now, kind of getting into how I'm actually going to get this rotor to spin. We're on board. There's a spinning, rotating magnetic field going around in the stator. And what it actually causes that rotor to spin. So first things first, we know that there's magnetic lines of flux going from north to south, that way, right? So there's magnetic lines of flux going that way. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna apply our left hand generator rule, right? So our left hand generator rule, our thumb is our relative motion, our finger is magnetic lines of flux in the stator from north to south, and our middle finger is the direction that current is actually flowing. That's fine. Um, so, okay, in this case, if the stator, let's say the stator is rotating that way, so north is moving in a clockwise direction, that would mean relative motion is that way, no problem. North to south would be that way, which means that my current is actually going into the board or into the paper. So that means my current is going into, so that means on that conductor right there, I'm gonna draw the back of the arrowhead, right? The feathers going into the page. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna take our left hand conductor rule. Right, so if current is flowing into the page like that, my magnetic flux is wrapping around the conductor. Use a different color. My magnetic flux is wrapping around the conductor that way. Okay. So now what we know about conductor, or sorry, magnetic flux is that the more magnetic flux we have, the better it's gonna be, right? In magnetic flux, they like to team up, right? They're like, oh, there's more of us, perfect. They all like to team up. So what happens, because we have this rotating flux going counterclockwise around that conductor, it's gonna start to build up because it's gonna join forces up top, which gives us a bunch of flux up there, and it's kinda gonna open up a space down here because instead of flux going north to south this way, it's gonna go this way, right? Think about the wings of an airplane, right? It's, it's easier for it to go this way around that conductor, so more of it goes that way around the conductor. What this does is this provides a rotational force or torque to that motor, and it's actually gonna start pushing the rotor in that direction. Now there is one other rule, which is the 
uh, right hand motor rule or rotor rule, right? Uh, index fingers north to south. So come back over here, north to south. Middle finger is direction of current, so into the page, and thumb is the direction that the rotor is going to spin. I'm not a big fan of this rule. For me, I'm just like, well, if the stator is spinning this way, I know 100% that my flux is building up here, forcing that rotor to spin, which means my rotor has to be spinning in that direction. And that is how a motor develops torque. What's gonna become really, really important is we know that the amount of current flowing through that conductor is gonna affect the magnetic field around that conductor, right? More current, we have a stronger magnetic field, right? The other thing that's gonna matter is the, the thing that's gonna affect, sorry, this amount of current is the amount of induced voltage, right? So induction is relative motion between a conductor and a magnetic field. So we gotta think, if I add more load to this motor, it's gonna slow down, as it slows down, that increases the relative motion, right? As the relative motion increases, the current increases. As the current increases, my magnetic flux gets stronger, which produces more torque. So that's how a motor actually increases the torque is by adding load, slowing down the motor, which increases our relative motion between the magnetic field and the conductor, which increases the current flowing in the conductor, which increases the magnetic flux, which increases the torque. I know that's a ton of info really, really quick, but um, that's how a motor works. So it's pretty cool, it's pretty interesting. They're kind of self-regulating in that way. Um, Thanks for watching this video. I uh, hope it helped.